Hey there, it's Rick here from the CAD Jury School and today I just wanted to cover a number of tips and steps in Maverick Studio Render, especially for those of you that are using either Matrix or Matrix Gold or even just straight out Rhino. And just wanted to show you how you can actually go about importing a 3DM file and very easily applying materials and producing a render. So let's get started. The first thing that you'll need to do is come into your preferences here. And what you want to do is just make sure that your settings are set up here under navigation mode to McNeil Rhinoceros. Okay. The software supports, you know, menuing and moving around, zooming in and panning, etc., uh, using a number of shortcuts and keys that are familiar with people from various different programs. So Obviously, being Rhino users, you want to use McNeil Rhinoceros as your preference there. So just make sure that you set that there. The other thing that you might want to just check is uh, your hardware. So you can see on my desktop here, I'm using a GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. It's a couple of generations old now. So the new 3000 series are released. So uh, if you can get your hands on one of those at the moment, that's a fantastic card. A lot quicker than this card that I've got in my machine. Of course, if you're running a notebook computer, you're going to be running a much slower graphics card. And, um, you know, just be aware that your rendering speeds and overall performance will be slower because of the, you know, performance of your video card. I'm just going to hit OK here. Now, the other thing that I might suggest to is uh, with the materials here, you can set them up so that you can actually toggle uh, the name of the material here. So that's handy, especially when you're getting started. I think it saves you having to mouse over the material to see the name of it. So you can set that up if you like. Otherwise, just toggle it off and uh, see the straight materials there. Okay, so uh, this is one of the default scenes that's loaded. We're not going to use that. We'll come in and import a 3DM file. So I'll come to File and Import. And I'm going to choose this file, which is Chain Ring. And click open. Now here uh, it's asking if you want to merge it into the current scene or open as a new scene. I'm going to select open as a new scene. Uh, just check some of my preferences here as well. And click next. And the next thing is we can set up an overall feel for the uh, render that we're going to create. So there's lots of different ambient settings here which includes a, a nice HDRI image. And in many of the scenes, we've got additional lighting set up. So the one I like to use, and it's certainly the one I suggest that you start off with, is just below this group of darker ones here. It's the second one here. It's set up with a HDRI image, but also we've got lighting set up, which will be able to adjust both uh, from the top, the back, and the left and right side of your piece of jewellery. So it gives you a lot of control and it's set up like you would do in a typical product shot. So I'll just click next here. And we get a little preview of our object. Just make sure you set it up for small. I recommend that. And just click proceed. Now this is going to open up your 3DM file. And the great thing with Maverick Studio is it will recognize layers in your drawing where in your Rhino drawing you've got objects that are in those layers. So in my case I've got a layer in my 3DM file over here called Diamonds and I've got another one called White Gold. So it makes it really easy to apply materials and I'll give you a quick look at what we're talking about here. So if we select in my case the White Gold here, if I come and look at my Materials tab here, so it's under uh, Library Shading and come down to the uh, little arrow here next to jewelry and open that folder and come into polished metals you can see I've got all my materials here so as I say you can hover over each one and it will give you the name of that particular material or you can come in and toggle this list mode which will give you the name again I think starting out probably is the best option to set it that way and I'm going to choose rose gold here and I can just simply drag and drop that to apply it to one object. In this case, I've got uh, that whole layer selected. So what I want to do is right click on it and say apply to selection. I'm just going to reuse the one I just placed. Click OK here. 
Okay, so let's do the same thing for this next layer, the diamonds. And these diamonds were a layer in our original 3DM file. So we'll select that. I can just come across here and we'll go up to our gemstones and select diamonds. Right click and click apply to selection. And that's it for our stones. Now, let's have a look at lighting and the power of Maverick Studio with regards to control over your lighting environment. So if we come to the light mixer, and we're going to switch that on. And as I said, in this scene, we've got ambient light, which is produced from the HDRI image. But we also have some lights, light back, light left, light right, light top. And we can control the power or the output of those lights by sliding this slider back down to reduce it or uh, to the right to increase it. Now, let's just start with this one. Um, you can mute a light to switch it off. So you can see immediately what impact that has and which light that is. And you can just slowly start reducing the intensity. And this is the super thing with Maverick is that it doesn't have to restart your render. As long as I leave my render window and the object fixed in the same position, I can control and come in and adjust these lights to my satisfaction uh, without having to re-render it. I think I'll leave it something like that. I generally leave this light mixer open and you can come in here and switch that off if you want to apply those settings to your scene. Uh, if you want to keep uh, manipulating those and adjusting those, then just leave that open. But uh, if you click here to engage or disengage the light mixer, it'll give you a warning and tell you that uh, do you want to consolidate the changes. If you click yes, it will apply those to the scene and restart rend your render. Okay. The other thing that I'd like to point out here is we also have a floor shadow catcher and this uh, controls the the amount of shadow, if you like, that's captured uh, on the floor of our scene. So you can increase that uh, if, if you want more of a shadow, a darker area underneath your piece, or you can reduce that back down to where it was. Okay, let's have a look at this ground plane and let's look at applying some different material here. So again, if we come back to our library of materials here, I'm just going to click on the jewellery tab here to roll that up and we'll come down here to marble. And there are a few choices in here, A, B and C. They're all slightly different, but I'll start off with A here. And let's apply just a really light grey marble. Now, because I'm going to apply this to the floor, I can just drag and drop it on there. So it will see the floor as a separate object. So I just simply grab it and drag and drop it onto my floor. And again, you can see immediately it starts to re-render and recalculate that scene out for me with the new floor in place. Uh, if I wanted something darker, you know, let's try this and drag and drop that on. I think I prefer that. It's uh, a compromise between a light flooring and a dark black. The other thing that I just wanted to point out as well is that we have different camera angles in Maverick Studio. So you have the, the camera that I've currently got set up is set up to perspective and there's another one called Perspective 01. Now if I wanted to change let's say the angle and, and save this as a default camera for this particular scene I can just simply rotate my object to where I need it and then click the new camera button here and it gives me a new name over here and an alias over here which I can rename if I want but uh, I'll leave it just called Perspective 002 and I'll just store this viewport and save it. So if I want to go back to my previous camera angle I can come back to say a perspective view and I can click on perspective 01 or 02 and change my view. So it's actually the camera position is what you should think of it like and as I say we've got the ability to store 
numerous ones in here just by uh, rotating the position of your camera angle and uh, creating a new camera there. The other important thing that I wanted to point out, uh, which does add a lot of realism to your pieces, is the ability to control depth of field. Now, depth of field controls what areas are in focus and what areas are out of focus in your scene. Now, those of you familiar with Matrix Gold would know that uh, in Cycles, a lot of the tutorials cover doing that post-processing. So once you've actually generated the render, they uh, have a tool or a filter that allows you to control that. This method in Maverick Studio is a, a lot more realistic. It generates a lot more realistic depth of field and it simulates a real-world camera. So you'll see the effect is much nicer. So to control that and how you set that is you just simply right-click in your scene and here uh, you need to make sure that you disable a global depth of field and or have that unchecked. You don't want to disable it. You want to have that unchecked. And you want to have disabled camera depth of field unchecked. So when I click on that, you'll see the whole thing's going to go out of focus, okay, because we've not set a focus position yet. And I can simply just right-click on an area that I want to set into focus and click on this tool here, autofocus, and you'll see it starts to control that depth of field. Now, this starts off at a, a very um, strong setting, and we can control that by uh, controlling the aperture. So if any of you have done any real-world photography, you'll know that the aperture controls the amount of light that comes into the camera. So we can increase or decrease the aperture setting on a camera, and we can do the same here in Maverick Studio. So what I normally suggest, or what I, what I do suggest strongly actually, is to come in and under here, under the lens settings, is under aperture, if you just lock that, so click the lock button, it will uh, highlight in yellow to indicate that that's locked, and let's increase this. Now this needs to be somewhere above probably 50 or 60 to, to generate you know, a more realistic sort of depth of field. So what you can see happening is I'm starting to get more area in focus. So the more I pull this to the right side, the more area is in focus with my camera. And, you know, the depth of field is a larger area. So if I want to reduce that, I can obviously drop that back down to bring uh, other areas out of focus. And this is a great way of adding a very photorealistic look to your renders. Okay, let's have a look at a few other things. So... The other thing I want to point out here is under the render tab here, you've got a final render mode and also a draft render. If you want to just a quick preview of your render, obviously you can click the draft render button and it will open up a window and start rendering out your scene. Uh, you can also control the resolution here. So the resolution here is set to 800 by 600. Again, starting out, I think that's probably a good size to use. When you've done a quick draft render and you've had a quick look at your render and uh, you're happy with it, you can then increase that size and, and click the final render button. I'll talk about sampling here in this window in a moment as well. Just under output, uh, this is the folder that you're going to save your file to. So the first thing that I do is come in and select the file format and you, most people will probably choose JPEG or PNG most of the time. There's a fantastic new option for PSD files for people using Adobe Photoshop and wanting to create you know, composite images where they've maybe removed the background and want to put that on their website. I'm not going to cover that in this video. There are a few videos on the Maverick YouTube page that cover some of that. Let's just save this as a JPEG image for now. I'll just leave this folder as it is, but again, if you wanted to, you can browse and browse to a particular folder. Okay. And, and specify the file name okay so let's click draft render and see this uh, render window pop up and that was it that was quick but it just gives you a very very quick preview and it's a preview in a in a much smaller file size okay let's just click okay here let's click final render the thing i suggest to is that final render is set with a very very high sample rate that high that sample rate of 12 uh, on particularly on a notebook computer where you've got a much slower NVIDIA card. It's going to sit there for a while rendering that out. Now, you know, you can leave Maverick Studio working in the background whilst you uh, go and do something else or go and uh, do a drawing in Matrix or Matrix Gold. 
it will continue to render because it passes the rendering process over to your NVIDIA graphics card and it works on that in the background. But I would suggest if you're running a notebook, definitely reduce this target SL. A lower number will produce a faster render. A lower number will produce uh, not as high a quality image, but it's really, honestly, pretty good. So I generally have this set when I'm using my notebook at probably about between nine, nine and a half, something like that. Uh, if I'm on this desktop computer, I'll set that higher at maybe 10 or 12. I'm just going to leave this uh, at, at this level for the moment. Let's just set our resolution here to something higher. Now, you've got uh, WXGA and HD and HD 16 by 9, which a lot of people would be familiar with on their desktop monitors, which is uh, 1920 by 1080p. It's full HD, 16 to 9 ratio. I'm going to just select that. And let me just scroll out a little bit just to get this viewport set up. Just one thing as, as well is uh, being Rhino users, if you hold your shift key down and use your mouse button, you'll drag or pan in that viewport. Okay. If you hold your right mouse button down, uh, you, can, you can spin around the viewport. Okay. So right mouse button will spin the viewport. Shift and moving your right mouse button will pan the viewport. And the zoom is just scrolling in and out. So using your scroll wheel, as everyone would be familiar with, with Rhino. Let's just reset our depth of field now because I've moved this object. You can see the stones are a bit out of focus. So it's super simple. I right click on the area and click autofocus. There we go. And let's click final render here. And this opens up our rendering viewport. Now, you can see the image is quite large. Uh, and I can scroll out of it just to sort of see more of the area that uh, it's going to render out. I can increase the size of this window so I can maximize this if I want. And there's a little separator down here that I can move. And I can zoom in a little further. And uh, just watch whilst this renders out. But it is pretty quick. As I say, this is a large image. It's 1920 by 1080 pixels. Try and do that uh, in Rhino Cycles or in um, V-Ray in, in Matrix and you'll see it does take a lot longer. But uh, this is, you know, pretty much 20% done. A couple more minutes to go and we'll have rendered this out. So I'll just pause this video and let this render out. Okay, that's now finished. And I'm just going to click OK. You can view the output file, the JPEG image, if you want, just simply by clicking here. We'll open up the window and you can preview it in Windows. And uh, one thing I just want to point out too, which is super important, which I haven't done in this model, I'm just looking at it, is just be aware of your uh, cutters for your seats and your stones. You just, you know, you might be saving this for manufacturing purposes and oftentimes you'll cut the seat bit smaller than the stone size just so that you can get in and bright cut that area but for rendering purposes really you don't want any overlap or interaction of metal um, with you know the, the seat of the stone on the actual um, gemstone itself so just make sure in well I know in matrix scrolls you can set the default size of the seat or the cutter to 1.05 percent so it's slightly larger than the stone uh, make sure you also sort of cut into the prongs as well and you sort of notch them a bit because, as I say, anywhere where there's metal intersecting a gemstone, uh, it's going to have an uh, effect and impact on the actual rendering. So your stones will end up looking a uh, little bit tinged of the colour of the metal that your object is, okay? All right, that's it for now. And I, as I say, I just wanted to cover that just for people uh, using the trial version. Hopefully that helps. All right. Bye for now.